friends, today's video is all about my plans for my 2023 Make 9. So the Make 9 challenge is a really popular one in the sewing community where folks pick nine patterns, typically, um, to sew up throughout the year. So it's really fun to see every what everyone is sharing and kind of planning or being inspired by, like, usually in January. I'm a little bit late. <laughs> And then to kind of like watch the progress throughout the year and then in like December, January, seeing like where folks ended up. So if you caught my last video, that was my review of last year's Make 9, where I'm not going to lie, like I was kind of disappointed, <laughs> not just with not finishing my Make 9, which is something that like I'm working on letting go of, plans change we see new things, we move on, that's okay. But then also the like the things I did make, I was not super happy with them. So, and I mean, that's real life too. Like I really don't want to, you know, <laughs> have this YouTube channel and like only show you like the, the happy fun things, but like there's, there's flops and fails and that comes with learning too. So with that learning process, I wanted to talk a little bit more about kind of like what I feel like my pitfalls were with my Make 9 last year and how I plan to remedy them. Then of course I will share my nine ideas as well as some patterns and fabrics. Now I am going to like kind of breeze through the patterns and fabrics, hopefully. I can like stay on task um, and I'll explain why in a minute um, and then yeah I'll finish off with just some like general thoughts about sewing this year and where I'm hoping to take my sewing practice as well as my like style inspiration so let's get into it so my make nine last year was a flop not only because I didn't like finish everything on the list, but mostly because it was something that just stressed me out most of the year. And I really like, I mean, nobody needs that. <laughs> um, I don't need to add extra stress to my sewing practice, which is supposed to be like a hobby that brings me joy. So I really want to focus more on that aspect of sewing this year, making sure that I'm not putting like extra pressure on myself. So I've kind of identified like three sort of pitfalls, or I'm calling them pitfalls, but like three things that did not set me up for success with my Make 9 last year. So they were, for one, it was really rigid. So I had, not only did I pick 10 sewing patterns to sew, I also picked the fabrics that would go with them which I see how I was thinking like, oh, I've done all of the planning. Now I just need to like get the projects to the machine, thinking that I had like maybe even done myself a favor. But the reality is that like my style changed, lots of things changed, new patterns came out where I wanted to like use that fabric that I had set aside for a new project or vice versa. So that just got like, way too rigid for me. Um, another thing was that I had set like, again, thinking that this would be like easier, I made sure that there were projects to do for every season. So kind of on like opposite examples, I had the Reynolds dress, which is very much like a summery tank top strappy dress. In theory, I suppose you could layer it, but I don't really do that. I've, I tried with mine and anyway, um, so that was like definitely a summer make. Whereas like the ACE top is a funnel neck long sleeve tee that I was not going to make in the springtime. So yeah, the idea was that I would have something, I could potentially have a project for any time of the year, but really it just became like, oh, I kind of like want to sew this, but it doesn't make sense to sew right now kind of thing. Um, 
And then the third thing is that a lot of the projects I chose needed a lot of fitting and a lot of twalling. So that is not an aspect of my sewing practice that is bringing me either joy or peace at this time. Um, I mean, fitting is a, a really valuable skill that I would like to dive into a bit more, but with where my sewing practice is at right now, it's just not the right thing for me. Um, I mean, fitting can be so tricky with like, there's, there's body image stuff, there's like time constraints. Yeah, and like what I really like out of my sewing is to like plan a project to see how a two-dimensional pattern and like a slab of fabric can go together to be something that I wear and enjoy. I really like the beginning and I really like the end of that. So putting a whole bunch of extra steps in the middle is really not the best thing for my sewing practice at this time. So those are the three things that I want to address with going forward. So for this make nine, rather than doing nine specific patterns with specific fabrics, I'm gonna have like an idea. So the first one I will talk about is a boho dress. So with that, that's kind of a loose idea where I will share a couple of pattern options of like sort of what I'm thinking, some fabrics that I'm loosely inspired by. And then if I change my mind somewhere along the line, that's fine, as long as I kind of keep it in that general zone. So I'm hoping that that will give me a lot more freedom. Um, secondly, I chose ideas or concepts that would have um, and patterns as well, like the patterns that I kind of basing this on are all going to have variations that could work for any time of the year. So another thing that I have on my concept list is fitted t-shirt. Uh, that's something I really need in my wardrobe. But I made sure that the patterns that I'm looking at for potentially doing that are going to have different sleeve lengths, different necklines, different variations that like, you know, whether I get the urge to sew it up in February or in August, there will be something to do with that project that I can start on right now and just go for it. And then lastly, I tried to pick things that would be either like pretty much no fitting, <laughs> um, looser flowy garments um, that won't require as much or that are gonna have like a lot of resources to go along with it. So that is my hope for creating a like more relaxed, softer, looser make nine that I can hopefully like, well, productivity goal is obviously like to make the nine things, but also like a more broader goal is for me to relax and like find more ease, um, you know, in my life overall, of course, but like also in my sewing practice that I can actually let this hobby of mine be that and like be a, yeah, a joyful, peaceful, energy giving experience rather than one that I that like brings anxiety. I mean, it's, it seems like a no brainer, but you know, I let myself get anxious about a lot of things. And so I'm really trying this year to be more disciplined with myself and, um, yeah, be more disciplined to hopefully let more things go. So that's the plan. And with that, let's, uh, look into some projects. So I did my kind of my grid for the make nine in three categories. So I will have three dresses, three tops and three bottoms. So to start us off, we are gonna look at dresses. And the first one is the boho dress. So I'm really, really loving just like loose, uh, soft, either like no waist or elastic waist. Just really like easy, 
I love like all 70s vibes as you probably know if you've been with me for a while. So the patterns I'm looking at, um, I loved the seam work Meg last year. I made a bunch of those. So that will like probably happen at some point this year. But I also want to try out the Closet Core NYX dress. Um, another option in kind of floating around is the LB Textiles um, Duplantier, Duplantier, I'm not sure how to say it. Um, super cute gathered dress um, with like nice big sleeves, love that. Um, another one, um, the, I keep wanting to say Dawson, but it's the Davenport dress from for, uh, Friday Pattern Company, goodness. Um, that one I really love. Again, it is like a drawstring waist, elastic neck, nice big sleeves, very flowy, very fluid. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for this one. I pulled a couple pat, um, fabrics. That's what these are. <laughs> Some fabrics for my stash. Again, like I'm not married to these, but these are kind of like the vibe, sort of what I'm hoping to sew with this year. Um, so I've got a really cute like slubby viscose with these little like yellow and taupe flowers. Um, this is one that I think I could wear like all season because of that like black background, but then the bright yellow is really cute for summer too. So that is an option. Uh, this is another viscose. This one is like a really precious one from my stash. So we'll see if I have the like guts to actually finally cut into it this year. I think I bought it in like very early 2021. So it's been in my stash for a while. But again, we'll see if I like get gutsy to cut into that. Last one that I pulled is a viscose linen and it is so gorgeous. It's super like crinkled from being in the stash, but it has like these dark maroony reds with like some burnt orange. Um, I think it is really pretty. Now this one I have less of, I only have three meters of this one. These ones are four and three and a half. So getting like a full boho dress will be a stretch out of this one, but we'll see how it goes. So next up I have a pinafore. Now I want to take another stab at a pinafore. It was on my make nine last year and I didn't really work out, but I want to try like a more traditional like bib style pinafore. So for that, I'm thinking another Jennifer Lauren handmade pattern, but this time go for the Pippi pinafore. Um, also the Tilly and the Buttons Bobby is a great option. That one has, I really like the buttons that go down the front um, and that it's a little more like workwear inspired, but the, um, the size range on that one is not as good, but I do have both of them in my pattern stash. So I'll take a look at those. What I don't have in my stash is um, a like length of appropriate fabric. Now I do have like some denims and some cotton twill that would work really nicely, but I have like too much of it. So both of those patterns like take like 1.7, 1.5 meters. And what I have in my stash are cuts of like 2.7. I don't want to like cut into those and then have a bunch of fabric left over. So I'm going to have more of a think on what I want for a pinafore, um, color and fabric wise. And, uh, yeah, get back to that one. But for now, still kind of thinking through a little bit of what I want there. Um, but for now I do have some good, like patterns to play around with. Last of the dresses, um, is another one that I don't actually have fabric for in my stash. There just wasn't anything like calling out for this specific project and that is to make a sheared dress. Now I've been seeing shearing like it's been so big the last couple of years and I think it's really going to work for me fit wise because 
I love wearing woven fabrics. I love wearing like cotton and viscose, but I have a, a hard time fitting my upper body because I have um, like large chest, really narrow shoulders, and then like a wide rounded back. And that combination has been tricky and I have not had a lot of success, um, particularly with the broad back stuff. So I'm really hoping that sheared dresses um, and tops will give me like the range of motion that I need while still being like wovens that I can wear and like, and, and they're so cute. Like I've really, really loved so much of um, that trend that's been, I, mean, I don't even know if you can call it a trend because it's been like three years now. <laughs> um, the patterns I'm looking at are the Victory Sophia. I really like this one that it has like an option for actual straps rather than just having like kind of the, the tubed bodice and then like tacking on a sleeve like way over here, which is not conducive for wearing like you know, bra straps that are like this wide. So I really like that one as an option. Um, the other one I'm looking at is the Sunday's dress from Le Perlin, Les, Les Perlines. Uh, it's the uncouth, un-French way to say that pattern company name. So I'm really sorry. Um, I have read that Shearing tends to work best in viscose. And like I said, none of the viscoses in my stash were like quite calling out to be sheared, mostly because like, if I just reach for this one. I want to like, if it's a print, I want to be able to see the print and not have it like the shrunk up way. So I'm kind of thinking I might grab a like viscose, maybe like a lighter viscose twill in a solid um, is kind of my plan for now. Um, but yeah, well, I'm probably gonna wait a little bit on that one. Again, especially if I end up going with the Sophia, that one has tons of like sleeve and skirt options. So there's a lot of room to play with like throughout the year. It's definitely not something I need to make like right now. So yeah, that is the shirt dress. If you guys have any other sheared patterns that you want to like share with me. Those are like the main two that I found um, that again, weren't just like tutorials where you like just attach the sleeve on like way over here. If you have any recommendations, let me know. So moving into tops, the first one on my list is a pullover. Now, well, really on my list is a loungewear set, um, but this is the top of that. So, you know, spoiler alert. Um, I made last year a set of the Helen's Closet Jackson pullover plus the Closet Core Plateau joggers. And I wear it like so much. Like I, I probably wear it like three days a week <laughs> if I'm honest. And it's one of those that like, as soon as it comes out of the wash, I put it on and then I like I wear it until it has to be washed again. So I really need another one. And this is the like one category where I don't have like multiple pattern options because I just, I know that I love the um, Jackson pullover. I have like, well, I have two of the pullovers and then I have a whole bunch of the t-shirts. So like it's a TNT pattern for me. It's something I really need in my wardrobe. Um, so I'm just gonna like cut to the chase and it's probably gonna be the first of my projects on my cutting table because again, like I just like really need it right now cause it's freezing here and I really want to be like cozied up. So I also have just the one fabric for it cause again, I'm getting started on it as soon as possible. So this is a huge chunk of fabric. Um, this is three and a half meters um, of sweatshirt fleece in this really cute, like green tie dye. It is super duper soft. So I'm really excited to get started on this as soon as possible. Next up is a fitted t-shirt. Now I realized that like most of the t-shirts in my wardrobe, again, were the like Helen's Closet Jackson tee. 
um, and I love them, but they are definitely like that boxier style. And when I'm like layering up, I definitely want something like a bit closer to my body. Also, like if I'm wearing skirts or like high-waisted trousers, I do kind of like something that fits in a little bit closer. So the patterns I'm thinking are the Pattern Scout Comfy Set. Uh, this is one that I, I made a couple, I think I made three last year and I've kind of dialed in my fit a little bit. Um, I think I modified the sleeves a little so I really like that one. Um, another one that I bought last year but have not yet tried is the Sew Over It Ultimate Tee. That one comes with, I think, like three neckline variations, some like body length options. So that one has a lot of potential. And then the one that I'm most excited about because I'm wearing it, it's cheating a little, I guess. Um, this is my first make of the year and it is the Helen's Closet Dawson tee. And I'm like absolutely loving it. I'm reaching for it all the time. It is so nice and cozy. It's perfect for layering. Um, I made it in a bamboo cotton jersey. It's super duper soft. And yeah, I now just like want to try all the variations and there are a bunch. So I have this really pretty I think this color would be like dark mauve or like even like rosewood. Um, so this is a cotton jersey, so it's gonna be like a lot more body, but I think that one is really pretty, will match tons of stuff in my wardrobe. This is the same fabric that I am wearing. It's the bamboo cotton um, jersey. I get it from Textilestad, but I know it's sold through Minerva. It's um, there's even a couple places in the States that are stocking it now. Basically, if you see something with the content, 68% bamboo, 28% cotton, 4% elastane, or I think that number adds up to 100, maybe not. It's like, it's that, it's really close. Um, it would be this one. So I did think this color is like a little on the bright side for me, but I, I'm really excited to try it out. Again, this will probably be another one that I make really soon because I really need, well, need, I really want more long sleeve tees in my wardrobe. I think I, I have this one that I just made and like one other one. So that's gonna be a priority and I'm really excited to try out this colorway. Next category is a blouse. Now, I made the Chalk and Notch Wren blouse last year. I made this really cute summery um, gingham version and I wore it so, so much. So I definitely want like another Wren blouse, but I do have a couple patterns that I've been wanting to try. So in my stash is the Friday Pattern Company um, patina blouse. So that one is super cute. I don't have anything, like literally anything in my closet with a collar on it. And it's because I usually don't like the collars that are right here, but I do like that that one is like more of a V-neck. So the collar is more of like a detail here rather than like at the neck. So it's one that I'm interested to try. And then another one that's kind of, I've had my eye on a bit is the... So how seven, it's either the Remy Raglan or the Romy Raglan. I think the Remy was the original with like the short sleeve and now they've come out with the one that is more of like a bishop sleeve that comes into a cuff. And that's the one that I'm more interested in. I pulled out like every single <laughs> cut of fabric in my stash that is like blouse weight and length. So real quick, these, these are the same fabric um, that I got from Bookin in Amsterdam. They unfortunately do not have a, actually, oh, this one too. But these two are um, like clip dot cottons. They're super, super cute. I love like both of these colors, but this like spruce, it's like my favorite. Um, also from Bookin is this like really 
it is a cotton twill, but it's really, really light. Um, it's got checks with like lots of colors. There's like pink and green and mustard. Very, very cute. This is a pretty standard viscose twill. It's on the lighter side, definitely like more blouse weight than dress weight, but very, very cute. And then lastly, I picked up this like, I guess it's like an eyelet. It's like a broderie anglaise um, cotton from the market last year. So I did have to like cut, ar cut around a big stain. Um, so that was like a little awkward, but there is enough to make a blouse. And it was like, I think it was like two bucks a meter or something. So totally worth it and very excited for all of these fabrics. So we'll see what I end up doing there. So now we're into the bottoms and this tie dye fleece is back to talk about my loungewear set that is like number one on the sewing docket this year. Um, so for the bottoms, I haven't quite decided which pattern I'm gonna go for. The ones I'm looking at are doing a repeat of, actually they're both repeats doing the closet core plateau joggers, or if I want to go for a like wide leg style and go for the pattern scout comfy bottoms. Um, I made, so I made both of these like last winter, loved both of them. I'm just like not quite sure what I want from this fabric. If I want that like closed in at the ankle, super duper cozy, vibe or if I want the kind of like more modern look of having that wide leg for the jogging bottom. So I'm definitely going to start with the sweatshirt or the pullover rather and kind of like go from there but uh, keep you updated because that one again is probably going to be coming up real soon and yeah I'll let you know. So moving on, we have flared jeans. Now these have come back like with full force. And I wasn't sure like are flared jeans for me, but I went shopping a few weeks ago and I tried some on and I was like, yes, I really want some of these. And I didn't end up buying anything and I could have, but they only had longs in my size. So I was like, if I'm gonna have to sew something, like I might as well just sew it from the beginning. So, I know this is kind of like breaking a couple of my make nine rules in that it's something I probably would have to twall. It would have some fitting to be done most likely. Um, and then I also like only have one pattern so far for this. Now in that regard, like if a new pattern comes along for flared jeans or even flared pants, that's totally fine. I have no problem like you know, pivoting there. But I'm really excited right now about the chalk and notch aisle jeans. So like since the tester call out happened in like October, they have just been living in my brain as like, I really want to make these. And part of it, I will be really honest, is that I really, really like sewing chalk and notch patterns. I always learn something new. Their instructions are really great. They always have like supplemental um, like materials, like videos, fitting guides. So, so yes, it is one that I would need to fit, but there's a lot of support there also. So that's really good. I also think having like one garment that needs fitting versus like seven <laughs> from what I had last year is like much more realistic for me. So I have a couple fabrics in my stash that are really great um, that like would fit the stretch that is needed for the pattern that are either fit the length or are like super, super close. Um, so first one is this rust like satiny cotton twill. Um, it's got some really good stretch. It has this really pretty like sheen on it. It would be like super duper 70s. I think I don't quite have enough 
I think I have 2.5 instead of 2.7, but I could go for like the more like sailor cropped style. So this is a possibility or like, I just might be able to fit them in 2.5 instead of 2.7. So that's one option. I have this super, super gorgeous, um, actually bought this fabric with the aisle in mind. Um, it's almost like has like a hatchy texture to it. So I would want, I probably wouldn't cut into this like straight away because it's so, so nice. It's not necessarily, it wasn't like more expensive than either of these, but I feel like it would be harder to replace because of the unique texture. Um, I might like not be able to find it again. Um, cause this was also bought in store. So it wasn't just like yeah. Anyway, I might, I really like this one. I'm just going to cut myself off. <laughs> um, and the last one is this like mid, mid blue, also a stretch denim. Could also play up like kind of the seventies vibe of the flare with the light wash. So if I do a twall, I might start here. Um, but yeah, these are, these are my options. I think there's some good ones for some flared 70s-esque pants. Okay, last category, or category, what are we calling it? Inspiration, project, anyway. It's an A-line skirt. So I found out last year that I really like wearing skirts. Um, so I really fell in love with the Forget Me Not Natalie skirt that Forget Me Not released last year. I made a tester version and then I made another one like pretty much immediately and I wore them both to death. So I was, that's definitely like one that's in the running. Another pattern that I'm kind of thinking about is the wrap view of the Closet Core Fiore. So I really like that one, but then I kind of want to keep my options open because I do want like for this fabric specifically, I'm kind of thinking about something midi length, but maybe like a quarter circle skirt even. Um, yeah, I'll talk about that in a minute. So fabrics for an A-line skirt, because again, for make nine, I want to not get too specific, but I've got this corduroy in this like kind of sandy color. I've had the idea for this project since I think like October because of Taylor Swift, like full honesty there. Like, no, it's not a guilty pleasure. Like I love Taylor Swift. She released her video for the anti-hero and in it, she wears a pair of like sandy camely colored flare jeans or flare cords rather, um, with like a little stripy top. And and someday I might like copy and paste that look verbatim, but I was thinking it would be really cute as, um, to do as a skirt in a similar corduroy. So that is my plan for this one. I do think I'm going to use the Natalie pattern for that one. Oh, I guess the Salida skirt, that is the other one I've kind of like had floating around in my brain, but I never wrote it down. So it just like whisked away. Salida skirt by True Bias. Like that is another very 70s-esque A-line. Actually, is it even an A-line? It kind of like, it's almost like trumpety. Um, that's what I'm thinking. Yes. Okay, but this one I'm thinking is probably going to be a Natalie because I've made it already. Um, I like the way that the panels go together. So this is probably a Natalie, but you know, not locking into anything just yet. This fabric... I have like so many feelings about this fabric. I know I said I was gonna breeze through, but this is one I've had in my stash for like, as I think it is the oldest piece that I have currently. Um, it's one of the first, I think it, yeah, definitely one of the first non quilting cottons that I ever bought. And it's an embroidered denim. I actually bought it in Europe when I was here visiting, I took it back to America, brought it back and it's been like, 
It's been with me through a lot and I've gone in and out of phases of liking it and not liking it and I'm really liking it right now. I feel like it kind of maybe sort of encapsulates like where I'm wanting to take my style this year. It's definitely like bolder than what I've been making the last year or so. Um, I think it kind of borders on like old lady. I think it kind of borders on like cowboy. Um, <laughs> but I think if it's framed as like 70s midi skirt, I think it could really work for me. And I'm really excited to have like a few more statement pieces in my wardrobe, particularly separates. Like I have nice statement dresses that I love, but my separates are all pretty, like a little bit boring. I think I talked about that in my like make nine evaluation that like, I love solids, but my separates are all just like solids that I kind of mix and match. And I would like some more bolder statement separate pieces. So that is this, <laughs> or at least I'm, I'm hoping it will be this. I'm super excited about it right now, but again, I know that if I like get married to, like if I lock myself into a project, I might like have some resistance about it later. So I'm trying to keep myself open, but I am really excited about this one potentially being like 70s cowboy old lady skirt. <laughs> Which like doesn't sound, it doesn't sound great when I put them together, those words together like that. But I think it's going to be something good. I, I'm excited about it. So that is my make nine for this year. I know it is not the straightforward, traditional, um, pick nine patterns and just commit for the year. But I'm really thinking that doing it this way, giving myself a lot of freedom and breathing room is going to be really beneficial. But I also think it was beneficial for me to do the like traditional make nine and let it have been a flop last year. Um, cause I do think I've really learned a lot about myself and in a way it was really like helpful for me to see just how much unnecessary pressure I was putting on myself and how I had allowed my perfectionism to really like get, really get at me. Um, I wouldn't say it's like it got the best of my sewing practice entirely last year because I did make some great things. I had a lot of fun, but like in that aspect, I just, I got so, like I didn't even want to talk about it like throughout the year because I just felt so like, so silly. I felt really like ashamed, I think of not making progress and of wanting to change, but not doing it. Um, yeah, I just put like a ridiculous amount of stock in, <laughs> in a sewing challenge and plans that I made. Um, and it just is like a very clear picture to me of how I am someone that can take something really fun and make it not fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, that these like perfectionist tendencies that I have um, can can really like hurt me and um, take something that is supposed to be joyful and energy giving into something that is like none of those things. So with that, I was like, like I said, I was like, do I even want to do a make nine for this year? Um, will I just be setting myself up? for getting stuck in that spiral again. But I think um, the benefits outweighed the my concerns, and I think I addressed some of those concerns with the structure that I've set up for myself. Um, and having, having done it, having made the plans, um, you know, because it wasn't just because I'm very, like, complicated and I overthink everything, it wasn't just pick nine patterns, but I did like a mini wardrobe evaluation. I looked at all of the patterns and fabrics in my stash and that was like kind of a two part thing of, it helped me like 
part with some things that were, have been in my stash for too long and I like passed those on. That was really great for me. Um, it also helped me see like how, how much there really is and how much great stuff there is. So I was feeling like really inspired by my stash again. Um, it kind of helped me see where I want to go like stylistically this year, where I want to like take more risks and be a bit bolder. So all of that is really, really exciting. Um, so those are like great benefits. And even if I don't make a single one of the nine projects that I assigned, like that was still a great process for me. Now I do want to make those things because I am excited about them. <laughs> um, but the next steps for me are going to really require some like gentle intentionality where I will need to practice like letting things go. If something like doesn't go my way, that's okay. That's part of learning and growing. And so I didn't want to just like not do anything, um, but I'm going to work on keeping my commitments loose, being careful about my self judgment. Um, and I'm hoping that like by, this is more vulnerable than I like <laughs> set out to be, but here we are. So we'll stick with it. Um, I'm hoping that like, if I can be really intentional about myself in, in my sewing practice, that, that, and I can reclaim sewing as like a positive space for me, um, that I can practice doing that like in other areas of my life because like I've talked about perfectionism and unrealistic expectations like tend to rule my life and I'm really kind of starting to see where that is detrimental and I'm really hoping that like my sewing practice can kind of be a good beacon in that and help me like yeah practice that learning in a positive and safe way. So the, <laughs> this went from like plan nine projects to plan healing my life. Um, but, but, <laughs> but that's accurate. That's, that's how I read into sewing and why sewing is so important to me. And yeah, I want to take you along a little bit better this time again, like through the changes and through, um, you know, how I'm feeling about make nine, because I do think that like, I'm not, I'm probably not the only one that puts this kind of pressure into areas of our lives that are supposed to be like relaxing and fun. So if that's you, I'm, I'm there with you. <laughs> we can hopefully like reclaim some space together. And, um, yeah, if you're someone that is like, yeah, that's why I don't do make nine, like mad respect, totally get that for you. Um, and I would love to hear about like, yeah, what are your like thoughts and tensions for sewing in 2023? Maybe you have like a mantra or some goals, um, or maybe you're just like, I'm going to keep on keeping on. Um, that's totally like wonderful too, but yeah. I would love to talk about it because I always do. <laughs> and yeah, that is it for me. I'm going to cut myself off before I go into some other like, you know, sob story <laughs> or like, no, cutting myself off. Okay. Thank you for watching. Thanks for getting this far with me. Um, yeah, I'm excited to see where 2023 takes us. So until next time, happy making, happy sewing.